Bonjour tout le monde. On vient de terminer le sommet du G20 ici en Indonésie. On a discuté des enjeux comme la guerre brutale de la Russie en Ukraine, l'insécurité alimentaire et l'inflation mondiale exacerbée par cette invasion et les changements climatiques. J'en ai aussi profité pour annoncer des éléments de notre nouvelle stratégie Indo-Pacifique. L'Indo-Pacifique, incluant l'Indonésie où on se trouve aujourd'hui, est une région qui a énormément de potentiel, énormément de potentiel pour l'économie canadienne. I've been very clear during this G20 that Russia's brutal war in Ukraine is appalling. After we learned the news of an explosion in Poland near the Ukrainian border, G7 leaders and other NATO allies had an important emergency meeting this morning. We need to remain calm and that we need to gather the facts and find out exactly what happened with a full investigation. Après avoir appris les nouvelles d'une explosion en Pologne, près de la frontière ukrainienne, les dirigeants du G7, avec des alliés de l'OTAN, ont organisé une rencontre d'urgence. C'est important de rester calme et d'enquêter pour comprendre exactement ce qui s'est passé. One thing that's certain is that the loss of life in Poland was a consequence of Russia's latest indiscriminate attacks on Ukrainians. Russia firing a barrage of missiles during the G20 summit, which they were a part of, proves their reckless behavior and their blatant disregard for the international system. These missiles are killing innocent people and destroying civilian buildings and are yet another demonstration of why it's so essential to continue supporting Ukraine. This afternoon, the British Prime Minister and I spoke with President Zelensky. We conveyed our condolences for the terrible loss of life as a result of Russian attacks. We stressed the importance of a full investigation into what happened in Poland, and we made it clear that Putin's invasion of Ukraine is ultimately to blame for this violence. I also had a call with President Duda of Poland. I offered my condolences and offered support for the investigation that will get to the bottom of what happened. Since the beginning of Russia's invasion, the Polish government and the Polish people have stood strong and stepped up for Ukrainians. We share their sorrow as we salute their strength and resolve. Canada and our allies are unified behind Ukraine. This week, we announced that Canada will provide $500 million in additional military assistance for Ukraine, which builds on the $500 million from Budget 2022. In addition, we're extending the Canadian Armed Forces training mission of recruits of the Armed Forces of Ukraine in the UK for another year until the end of December 2023. This week, we also sanctioned 23 individuals responsible for human rights violations against Russian opposition leaders. Those who support this invasion need to be held accountable and will use every tool at our disposal. This war is, of course, tragic for Ukraine, and it's also bad for all of us, for all G20 countries and, indeed, for the whole world. It's disrupting supply chains, it's creating global inflation and food and energy crises and making life more expensive for people everywhere. This instability has repercussions for everyone. If we want to make our world more stable and our communities safer, we also have to fight climate change and protect the environment everywhere. This week, we're announcing new initiatives to do just that. We're, stepping, we're supporting Indonesia as it scales up its adaptation efforts, including in response to rising sea levels. In addition, with partners here in Indonesia, we'll help protect or restore tens of thousands of hectares of tropical coastal vegetation. By keeping this vegetation healthy, we'll prevent biodiversity loss. And we're fighting climate change because mangroves, tidal marshes and seagrasses store even more emissions than forests on land. We'll be building on our work here to protect nature and harness its power to fight climate change as we welcome the world to Montreal for the Nature Cop in just a few weeks. 
A gathering of the world's major economies like the G20 also provides opportunity to foster cooperation on sustainable economic growth. On Monday, I spoke in front of a room full of business leaders from around the world. They know that Canada is a stable place to invest because we have the values that make us a reliable partner, the raw materials and trade access, and we have a skilled and ambitious workforce. I made it clear that Canada is rapidly becoming the energy and tech supplier a net zero world will need. We're focusing on the whole supply chain, auto workers building electric vehicles in Ontario with batteries built in Quebec, from nickel, nickel and lithium mined in northern Canada. Because of the work our government has been doing in partnership with the private sector, Canada now ranks second in the world on battery supply chain. This is proof that fighting climate change and creating good, sustainable jobs go hand in hand. Hier, pendant l'événement de partenariat pour les infrastructures mondiales et l'investissement, on a fait une annonce pour aider à répondre aux besoins en matière d'infrastructures durables dans l'Indo-Pacifique. On facilite donc les investissements dans les énergies renouvelables, tout en créant des opportunités d'affaires pour des entreprises canadiennes. Ici, en Indonésie, ces partenariats vont aider à bâtir des infrastructures pour être moins dépendants du charbon et réduire la pollution. En renforçant nos liens avec nos partenaires ici et en développant de nouvelles relations, on continue notre travail pour aider nos entreprises canadiennes à prospérer et pour créer des bons emplois pour la classe moyenne. Si on veut faire croître notre économie, il faut s'assurer que les gens restent en santé. Et si on veut que les Canadiens soient plus en sécurité contre la COVID-19 et d'autres virus, il faut que les gens ailleurs dans le monde le soient aussi. C'est pour ça qu'on va investir dans le Fonds de lutte contre la pandémie, une initiative du G20 gérée par la Banque mondiale. On va aussi investir pour aider les autres pays à produire et développer des vaccins à ARNM en Afrique, en Amérique latine et dans la Caraïbe. I want to thank Indonesia for hosting this G20 summit in a very difficult time. But look about what we're talking about here and what it means to Canadians and people around the world. Biodiversity, climate change, inflation, and of course, the impacts of Russia's illegal war. Global challenges require global solutions. And organizations like the G20, delivering for our citizens, are vital. Canada will continue to defend its values and create more opportunities for people. We'll continue our work here in the Indo-Pacific tomorrow at APEC, and we'll keep focusing on partnerships that will result in more good jobs for Canadians and more opportunities for our businesses. Merci beaucoup.